going to teach you guys how to do a seamless um, seam for helmets. Um, right now I've got the Blue Ranger Power Ranger helmet from Mighty Morphin. This is the front piece and that is the back piece. You can see that I have the magnets in already and if you guys want to learn how to do magnets I do show it in one of my videos but I can do a video just on the magnets themselves these actually haven't been touched up by Dremel which I will be doing um, so they still look all jagged and stuff all around the edges you can see on on the front piece how I've started um, smoothing out the edges on some of them because this is sandable but I only started because my cordless Dremel died. Uh, but the problem is this sets just a tad lower. Uh, that's a problem with some of these 3D prints sometimes. If you get it, you know, if you put two pieces together, your first two pieces say it's this one in the front and this one, and you're off by just a hair. Just a hair. Well, then that makes the next one off by just a hair more. And the next one off by just a hair more. So now you're three hairs off. And your four hairs, five hairs, you know what I mean? So by the time you get to matching up your seam, there's going to be small gaps and things uh, that are in there sometimes. And you can even see that that's off by just a tad. Just a tad. And, I mean, almost non-noticeable. You can really see right here just how far that one is off there. Because um, that piece that has all the black on it this piece right here it just didn't want to fit right I think I got this piece on just a little off and it forced this one to not match up very good and I matched up the edge here but then it shaped it made the rest of this shaped weird uh, so the first thing that I did is I went in and I put the two halves together with tape I'll show you a picture of that right right over here to the side and then once I put it together with tape, I ran the tape in between to, to uh, do the magnets process. And um, the reason why I wanted to do the magnets thing is because I wanted to put both. I wanted to get both of these sides together because these magnets are strong enough that um, these two spots here were actually skinnier than these two spots here. So these came out a little bit wider because of that one piece. So I squeezed them together and put tape around the end here to make sure that they matched up and then uh, set the magnets in there. That way every time that I put the two halves together, uh, it's going to put them together right. Um, I didn't put the hinge in yet. I'll be putting the hinge in soon. I don't really need the hinge at the moment as long as I have the magnets. You can either put the hinge in the top and then two magnets down at the bottom or the hinge in the top and the latch is down at the bottom, however you want to do it. Well, the latch is not really, because the latches actually use force to go together, but you can put these little things here, on the inside of here, and on the inside of here, that way they push up against each other. I mean, there's several ways to do it. The magnets, to me, are just the easiest, fastest process, because this uh, water weld dries really, really fast, and it's super hard. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the best things that you can use as a cosplayer. So now, every time that it goes together, even though that this is wider, I also added heat to it. I forgot to say that um, when I was putting these together with tape, I took a hair dryer and just ran it in and out of here. You can see how this has a little bit of a misshape to it where it heated up just a tad too much. Um, but I wanted to heat up right in here so I could kind of squeeze these two sides together a little bit and then let it dry. Or let it cool back down and once it hardens back up it'll stay so I got really close and then once I did the magnets thing and I basically pinched the two ends together set the magnets up now the magnets have it set perfectly uh, so now all I have to do I got just regular masking tape and I had to reset this this top magnet here broke off um, this top magnet here broke off, so I had to reset that in with uh, super glue and baking soda, which is just as strong as this water weld. If you have a piece break off or something like that, you can just use that. Um, it's real easy. Just kind of put the super glue down in there, then take baking soda and pack it down in there with it. 
and then just smooth off the top. And then I'll, I'll come back through here with a Dremel. That's why I don't have these two halves together right now to show you guys, because for one, it's drying. Number two, I got to Dremel that before I put the two halves together to make it a smooth top again. Um, but right now I'm going through where it's not drying at, and I'm just putting masking tape all the way around. And I'll build up a good edge. It'll probably come out to here. And then you want it all the way on the inside too. Because when you push this Bondo through, you're going to want to push it down in where there's cracks as far as you can. And you don't want the Bondo sticking any part of this helmet to this side of the helmet. So what the masking tape is going to do is it's going to block this back piece from getting anything on it. From sticking to it or anything like that. You're still going to have to pry it apart. But once you sand it down, you can st actually sand it while the two halves are together, all the way down to the to the tape. It's really awesome, and it'll look seamless with the tape. And then you just take the tape off. But you've got to make sure that along this edge here, that you have no that looks like it's a uh, crease, but it's not. It's got to be flat all along this edge, because this is the what's the most important is this edge. Uh, what you want to do is find the low side. So, if the back, if the lip back here set up lower than the back of that, then you would be putting the bondo on this side. Um, but since the since the front part of the helmet sits just a tad lower than the back, then I'm going to be putting the bondo on that side. Reason being is, I mean. It's basic understanding, you know, you're adding Bondo to it, so you add up to this level. You don't go from this, you know what I mean, you can't go backwards or else you're just adding more to a side, to a side that's higher. Now sometimes, like my Red Ranger, I had, like this side was higher and this side was lower. Sometimes that does happen. And what you do in that case is you just add Bondo, you, you just do one side, you add Bondo all the way around, try to get it as close as you can. Uh, and then tape the other side and do the same same thing again. I got really lucky with this one because this this one's higher all the way around just by a hair. Um, it's a little bit higher on the top, and you guys will see that here in a second. It's a little bit higher on the top, um, but that's going to be real easy to fix. So now you can you can see it together with the magnets, and you can see just how much of a gap that has in it in some areas. And we're going to cover that up. Now this might be good for some people, but this isn't good for my builds. I gotta get, I gotta get it good. So especially that gap there, because as soon as you start moving that hinge back and forth, and that'll get worse. So, and this, I I went ahead and uh, marked all the magnets with green. I've never done this before, but I think I'm gonna start doing it now that I thought about it because uh, when you take it apart the Bondo actually sticks really hard to this and there's resistance and it's good to know where your magnets are at so when it starts resisting you know you can just kind of pry it here and pry it here you know where your magnets are and really pop that out I'm not gonna leave this together because I think this is one of the magnets here that has some uh, yeah, I think so. That might be why that's got a gap in the first place. Yeah, it's got a little super glue baking soda spot. So that's still got to be uh, dremeled down smooth. So uh, I'm going to wait for those things to dry. You want to give them at least three or four hours to cure. And then dremel them down flat. And then we'll put this thing back together. And uh, we will start loading this up with Bondo. A little bit at a time, we'll do about this section first. Even the small spots that you don't see it get, like right here. Still want to put some Bondo in it. Just so you can make sure you get one smooth, fluid, seamless uh, seam. So you can see just how much above that that goes though. It doesn't seem like a lot from back here. But you get up close and that really, it's about half a, 
half the thickness of the design. So that's why we're taping this side and putting Bondo on this. But it's just not high enough to where it's going to affect it much here. Like we'll be able to build this with Bondo. And there's a spot over, yeah, right there that's soft anyways. I don't know what happened when I was printing it, but you can see how it kind of goes down. So this works out perfectly. I'm just going to go from about this point all the way to the back so we get a nice, smooth Bondo. And I'm going to go all the way to about here with the Bondo. I'm going to really shove that down in there. All right, so I went ahead and Bondoed the back, Bondo spot putty. Um, but you can see here that I've put the Bondo along the side. I was going to show that going on, but I don't want to uh, insult your intelligence. I mean, it's fairly simple. You just, you know, put some Bondo on your finger, and you go along the line, and the first thing that you want to do is push it into the gap. You know, push it down all the way through to where you can see it. Uh, like, like right there, how it's coming through. I mean, I did come in here in a few spots that I it didn't go through and I added some Bondo and pushed the Bondo back from the other side but there's a spot where it came through right there it came through really good but you want to try to get as much to come through naturally on its own that right there is a part that came through because you want it to go all the way all the way through uh, and then if you don't get it all the way through you can come in through the other side because typically it went most of the way and you can come through the other side with some Bondo and put that in there uh, just push it in so I didn't do much bondoing on the inside the outside you do want it to match because this is what everybody's gonna see it dries really quick so you can't do this all at once so the first round is just focusing on the seam getting it all the way through uh, second round is thickening up the line uh, so you can get these two sides even and then the third round of bondo is to spread some out this way so you have plenty of bondo to smooth up to that point and you can see here on the top, I went pretty far with it. Because the top actually comes downwards, and then that came up. So I want this to be a real nice, smooth, all the way up. Because you never want it to go like this, and then up, and then down. You know, I mean, you can really tell when it's kind of a bump or something. If you give it a little bit more space to elevate, it, it looks more natural. Um, so you can see I put the green around the outside because it's just a better tape and the other tape was kind of coming up at when you the other masking tape when you stick it to the bondo the bondo putty it doesn't stick very well so it was kind of coming up so I followed it with this green tape and now I can't see the spots where my magnets are so I'll just have to look on the inside because I I put green on the spots where all the magnets are I should have made it come out a little bit further but I'm not too worried about that I've never done it before I was going to try it on this uh, because the magnets will have resistance when you're taking it apart. This whole entire thing will have a ton of resistance, but the magnet areas will have more. And I just wanted to know where the magnets were. It doesn't really matter all that much. Um, but you can see all the way around. Made sure that put I loaded up a bunch of Bondo down here because I want to make sure that this is real smooth right into there. Also on the other side. So feel free. I mean, this has... The, the seam is right here. So you can tell just how much Bondo I went from here to here. You know, feel free to get it all over this tape on this other side because you want to make sure that this is just smooth. And just feel free to get on, get it onto the tape. Go as, as, you know, go as liberal with it as you want, as much as you want. Um, the thicker the better. Because if, if you don't push it all the way through and you put it over the top part real thin, then when you get done and you start sanding, you'll just have a little shrivel kind of coming over onto this side and it'll just chip off or break off. So, and make sure that you do it with this Bondo stuff here and not the, the red Bondo putty that comes in a tube. Because this stuff is, everybody says online that they're the same thing. This is just in a bottle and it dries a little slower. Um, they're not. This is softer. It sands so much easier. This is a lot harder, a lot heavier duty. And when I need to thicken something up and strengthen it up, I use this. I don't use this. So I've never been able to strengthen something up with this. This is literally just supposed to be used for spot putty. Like, 
little tiny spots where you need to smooth it out and just kind of put it on. That's what this is made for. Uh, not to strengthen things up or anything. So, anyways, that's all done. So we'll have that seamless thing. Next thing that I'm going to do is come back in here with a um, probably a 60 or 80 grit sandpaper and uh, uh, maybe a 120. 120 is pretty good on this stuff. Um, and then using a 220 to really smooth it down. That's usually what I use. Maybe a 120 sandpaper. Something that's just a higher grit than 220. Um, probably a couple. You know, you can go one 120. Uh, I think they have a 135 mechanical sandpaper or anything in the, the uh, double digits rather than the triple digits. Um, sands this stuff down real good. 60 grit may be too much. It may weigh too much off of it. 80 grit should be fine, uh, but 60 grit might just be too too heavy. Um, but we're going to go in here and sand this, basically sand it down until we see the, the uh, tape through here. And we'll sand it all the way down until we see the lip. And then we'll, uh, we'll take the two pieces apart straighten it up a little bit. You don't want to go too much on sanding on the inside because you can sand warps in it. So um, there's, you got to be real, real careful with it after you sand it down. We'll show you guys all that. Well actually the next time you'll see it this will be sanded down. Right, so there it is. Now it's completely seamless. You can't see any gaps in it. Before I did this, you could see a whole lot of light and stuff coming through. A whole lot of gaps. Now there's none. So, uh, one thing that I did find while doing this is a few spots that I need to thicken up. Um, so I'm going to use the spot putty once this dries, because I wash it, you guys know I deep wash everything in between every step, so that's why it's like dripping wet right now. <laughs> so I'm going to put some putty, some spot putty, in these spots here, and uh, on this side, you can see on this side how the side, the way it's shaped, goes out and down. I apologize this thing I wanted to focus. And you look at this side and it kind of bends in a little. It's just misshapen. So I didn't sand this the rest of the way down because there's no point in it. I'm gonna have to build that out and then uh, build that part out. And the reason why what happened is you can look over there and I put it this section right here is just a little weak and you can see where it broke right there as I was sanding it a bit too hard um, so I'm gonna go reinforce that uh, you can really see a spot sticking up right there so I'm gonna reinforce that with super glue and baking soda and that'll make it real tough um, and I'm gonna build out this part to match the other side it's just off by a tad but you can you can tell Oh, I can tell. So uh, I'm gonna go in and fix that. But this video is about the seamless, and it is finished. That's how you do it. That's how you make a seamless uh, seam. And now it's it's not gonna be seamless, seamless when it's done. I mean, this it breaks in this helmet breaks in half, two different halves. Uh, and there's also gonna be um, primer filler put on this which is going to be sanded down and on this and sanded down and stuff like that so this is going to be as about as seamless as you can get but when you put these two halves together you're still going to see that it's got a seam here but it's not going to be uh, so uneven like it was before it's got this good as you can get